come back this morning, the fallout from the tech wreck, the rough start to the year for technology stocks. We have the CEO of DreamFunded who will be joining us next. His company gives investors access to invest in tech startups before they go public. It has been a painful start to the year with the tech sector feeling the brunt of the losses. The Nasdaq has given back all of its gains since late 2014 already just this year. It's off 14 percent. Joining us right now is Dream Funded CEO Manny Fernandez. Dream Funded is an equity crowdfunding platform connecting angel investors with pre-IPO technology companies. And Manny, thanks for coming in today. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me. I'm delighted. So just for people who don't understand what this is, Dream Funded is all about taking and matching up people People who are working at a lot of companies have equity, would like to get some way of getting out of that equity before the company goes IPO, and you match them up with investors who are willing to jump in? Absolutely correct. That's what we do at Dream Funded. Yes. So that, that seems like a perfect idea, something that's wonderful as, uh, as, as these technology stocks are going up and up and up, and we see all these unicorns that are coming uh -huh. out there. But what happens at a year like this, where we've seen the NASDAQ down 14% and the NASDAQ Internet, Internet uh, Index down by about 21%? Does that dampen? Um, investors enthusiasm for this? Actually it's a real opportunity for many because now we can be able to um, get uh, access to invest to shares at terms that are better for investors if you will. So if the market is volatile as it is we'll be able to buy at a price that's more realistic if you will. When employees are seeing what's going on in the market so that they're also uh, uh, being able to sell at a price that they understand that's uh, more realistic. So the, the same thing happens in the pre-IPO market as what we're seeing here in the actual market? The, the shares come down substantially? No, I think people on the private pre-IPO market are thinking 24 to 36 months long-term view. They're not thinking I'm going to buy it on Monday and sell at the end of the day. So there's no volatil volatility. There's a lot of belief in these great companies and uh, you know, I don't see it uh, being a negative thing. Well, you just said that they, you can get more reasonable prices. That suggests that the prices have come down. The supply has definitely increased, but it, it, it's just better for the investors that are interested in. Uh, some people are just tied up with their emotion, if you will, so they, they make decisions that are probably not the best over the long term. What, what does that mean? Well, if you, people get caught up in the news frenzy of the, the stocks are going down and things are challenging, so sometimes they, they push the sell button too early where they could have just wrote it out. It's curious, Manny, because if, if you're in the pre-IPO market, yes. and assuming that the company did do an IPO, mm -hmm. what sort of discount relative to where they would trade on an IPO basis could you buy the shares in the, the pre-IPO market? That's a good question. What we do at DreamFunded, we have an internal metrics that we try to look at and what we buy the share, what we think we can make a three-time return over 24 to 36 months. So we work at that numbers and we back it up based on the share price. Right. Because for an investor like me, if I'm going to invest with you, uh -huh. I've got liquidity over in, in the an IPO. With yeah. you, I don't have liquidity, so I'm going to want to haircut that price to some extent. Sure, and you can get liquidity in the private market. You can sell after a year. But by the time it goes public, most of the returns are gone. If you study what happened in the last, from Google all the way down to Twitter, there's a chart that we have on our website, dreamfunded.com, in the About Us section that was produced by Andreessen Horowitz. Most of the returns are gone by the time it goes public. So if you're looking for the big returns there, it's not happening. So the IPO investor is the dumb investor? No, they're, they're sophisticated investors. Just by the time it gets there, and it just changes the, the dynamics of the investment. You know, that, that's one of the things we've talked about back in 2001 when all of these IPOs, these internet yes. companies came, it was the big dot-com bubble, and we felt like the retail investors were the ones who got left holding the bag because of exactly what you just said. By the time it goes to IPO, most of the gains are already gone. Uh, the supposition with more and more people able to get in on the pre-market activity is that that's where the, the pain would be kind of kept and held and that it doesn't necessarily make its way out to retail investors. Is that what you think is happening? I think that people that are getting in in the pre-IPO market and then waiting before it goes public, it's getting a bigger return. As I mentioned, 24 to 36 months, they're getting a potential two to three times return. This has been happening all around Silicon Valley. It's just never been publicized on CNBC, if you will. So by the time it goes to a retail investor, the early investors still get out, but the other investors that are getting in, you know, they just got to be able to but pay that attention to this. But that describes the upside. If you're, yes. if you're dealing with a downside market where things are coming down and it's not going out to the retail investor, it's being held there, that implies that the pain is being taken in the pre-market instead of after the IPO. You, you got to not just take one example and, and paint it with a broad brush. Each company does different things. And I think that you just got to look at each company and, and see what will happen with it.
Okay, but I, I guess my question is, is the reality that's playing out in the market, does it play out in your market, in the pre-market as well, or is this, there is no connection between the two? There's always a connection. Everything is, is connected. So, what's the specific question? Well, I think the question is, when you see pressure on the, on the NASDAQ, like we've had 15% down this year, are you starting to see maybe prices come off a little bit in your market, or is it, is it just tacky that you can't get buyers and sellers together because buyers drop away and the seller just sits there? Is, I mean, does it affect your pricing at all? I think it's, what we're finding is a boom based on what's happening in the stock market. It's kind of like the opposite. So some savvy investors are realizing they can get an opportunity before it goes public, and then at the same time, you've got employees that want to be able to uh, get some money off the table because you know, they never know what can happen. Yeah, I would think if I were an employee and I were seeing what was going on here. I'd be here, much more eager to sell. Exactly. And, and get out and get somebody else to take these shares because I'm worried that my company is never going to have an IPO at this point. I can't tell what the future is going to hold, but what I'm finding is these uh, private tech stock markets are acting very much like people can buy and be able to sell within uh, our platform, and that's going to be an interesting thing, what will happen in the future if this keeps happening. Okay. Manny, thank you for coming in today. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Big delay on, on what we see in, in the monitor. Yeah, right. Because I was totally safe, and I had the biggest yawn because it, my alarm shot was my alarm it was set for 2 a.m. out here you know you, you try that you just try it. so then I and I did and then I looked there and it came up full on I was like oh because it, it, I was fine there was not I was not on camera but I was on camera anyway um, coming up there wasn't you Manny it was 2 a.m. coming up much more on today's